and it should focus. You can't have a tea time without the tea. Okay, and that experience. And when I came back home, home, yeah, I lived in Europe for a little bit. Wait, <laughs> super random <Wait>. also. <laughs> Definitely my first heartbreak. Mm -hmm. like completely early. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's made me a lot more, I guess, like I understand when I see a young girl behaving a type of way. Yeah. I'm not very judgmental because I'm like, I've done a lot of those things. I hey guys, you're listening to Tea Time with Tay, a podcast series where I sit down, like I have a choice, brew some tea, and then spill it. Let's start the show. All right, guys, I am back for another episode of Tea Time with Tay, and I'm super excited because I am here with my new friend, hey. Jack. <laughs> she is an amazing YouTuber, and I will obviously put all of her links below, but I am so happy that you agreed to be oh, on. Yeah. Excited so to be here. I know. <laughs> we are actually to Toronto. Well, not Toronto. Basically. I, I say like, Toronto. <laughs> yeah, anybody outside of Canada, whatever, like, they say, where are you from? Most people just yeah, say Toronto. That's what I do. Even yeah. though it's like, I'm in a little town, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I try to get as many of my fellow Canadians on here, and I'm really happy. And yeah. I figured we'd start by like explaining like how we met. Sounds good. So a couple, maybe like a month or two ago, yeah. now, we were both asked to speak mm -hmm. at this girl empowerment thing. And mm -hmm. I was super excited because I love working with Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi. And <laughs> she just is all about female empowerment. And this one was specifically about Pink Holy Shirt Day, right? Pink Shirt yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah. And Pink Shirt Day was... It was a new kind of like movement. It started from two boys who helped out a guy who was bullied for wearing pink. So he like, they passed out pink shirts to people at the school. And now it's like Pink Shirt Day. We all celebrate yeah. wearing pink, which yeah. is awesome. And it's to raise awareness about um, bullying mm -hmm. and just you know, which is a huge issue in schools nowadays. Yeah. So we were very both blessed to actually my door is. Oh no! I swear, <laughs> my house, my house is so like my my door is open. We have like wind tunnels. In the house. It's oh. So weird. Um, but yeah, we were both asked to be speakers. So when mm. I got there, I was like super nervous, and I saw the lineup of people, and went, "Oh God, why am I here?" Like they have like Elijah mm. and Jamie who just were on the launch, and um, oh, there's someone else. I'm like completely blanking out. No, too long. It was the launch winners each year. Yes, the launch winners. Yeah, yeah. and then me and you. Yeah, <laughs> and then Jackie, like YouTuber extraordinaire, and oh. then me. But when we, like, I feel like right when you first met, you were so welcoming to me. Oh, thanks. I was so nervous. I was so worried that I was gonna be like cold and like looking really closed off. So I'm glad you thought that. Yeah, because I was so nervous. I remember you saying that to me. You were. You, I remember you saying you're. So, you know, I. I'm just really quiet because I'm really nervous. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing, I think what a lot of people, what I loved in your speech is that you mentioned that, yes, you are a YouTuber, and yes, you have like a very big audience who loves you, but you are, uh, you still are a person who gets nervous. And I think that's something that's a misconception oh, about wow. YouTubers. Mm -hmm. They assume that they have these like, larger than life personalities and like they love crowds and they love people. <laughs> yeah, it's 50-50 I feel like. Yeah. There's, some personalities now who are so outgoing and love all the attention and then everyone else is like i started this in my room i'm more comfortable alone and like i personally love interacting with people but i'm i'm pretty anti-social for the most part so like when i'm in a big crowd it, it is kind of overwhelming but mm -hmm. i i do really love it so it's just kind of getting used to crowds and, yeah. and whatnot but yeah. And um, it being Pink Shirt Day when we first met, you we both kind of touched on the different experiences we've had with bullying. Yeah. I definitely had, when I first got back to um, high school after my accident, uh, there was a rumor that went around that the reason I got injured was because um, I somehow took some kind of sports enhancement drugs and then somehow that meant I was going to be in a wheelchair. When like how does that even it made come no, around? It, like, oh. it made no sense. It's because I was like in the special ed sports program, mm -hmm. and what I accidentally like, it was like an accidental rumor that started because my mom, being the Jamaican woman that she is, <laughs> when the juice is almost done in our house, she will mix all of the juices together to mm -hmm. make like one final drink. So I remember one day I went to class with this drink. I had my bottle. And somebody's like, oh, what are you drinking? And I'm like, you know what? I don't really know. My mom kind of just mixes it up for me and I drink it. Yeah. And in grade nine, being a super, super, you know, jacked up girl in gymnastics, mm -hmm. people were like, oh, 
make drink your mom made that you don't know what's in it. Oh my steroids. gosh. Come and then, on. <laughs> and then when I went away for the year and came back and I was in a wheelchair, they're like, steroid accident. Okay. And so I got like a little bit of bullying in high school for that. But I know you also um, went through some bullying. So yeah. yeah. Sure. So my bullying experience, I feel like most people growing up have some sort of yeah, situation at some point. Um, I think middle <laughs> school started rough. There were, I think grade seven and eight for like everyone is just kind of hard years for the most part. <laughs> so I remember there actually was a rumor in middle school and I didn't talk about this at the um, event. I just focused more on high school. So Exclusive. here's the tea. Um, Literally, <laughs> here is the tea. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was younger, I ended up going to an older party and I thought I was really cool. Yeah. And um, after that party, there was a rumor that was completely untrue, but it was super weird because it didn't go through the kids. It was actually in the parent community. So I guess what, what? happened, this is kind of confusing, but a girl told her mom something that she heard happened, okay. but I think she just made, made up to see her mom's reaction. I don't know. And then the mom actually called the other moms and like warned them that I was kind of like a bad seed. And then it actually went to the school board so there was like, it was rough because there was meetings like actually about me doing like, you know, some outrageous stuff for yeah. 13 year olds to be yeah. doing. So I had to go to counseling like in the middle of the school day and I was so frustrated oh because I'm like, gosh. this is false. Like this isn't true. But when you have all these adults, you know, perpetuating the rumor. I think, I think rumor, it would actually make it way worse because yeah, they it's wouldn't like believe me. an adult's, uh, an adult's um, voice over years. Yeah. And so wow. I definitely had problems with authority after that because I was constantly being told I was like a liar and, and I was like this bad egg when I, I really wasn't. So then I was in Belgium for that experience. And when I you came back Belgium? home, yeah, I lived in Europe for a little bit. Wait, <laughs> super Wait, random also. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. You yeah. went to Belgium? I did. I've been to Belgium before. It's beautiful. I, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I did have a great it's time. So this is just one I mean, you experience. Back, you still back in there, like, I'm thinking, like, oh, like, you know, like, small town, like, thing. No. <laughs> so when I was, like, in Belgium. Yeah, so. awesome. It was a completely different school, different experience, but that you know, situation definitely set me up for coming back home and having a bit of a chip on my shoulder yeah. and my, um, I guess reputation, I had been told I was something for a while and I started to show it. You know, when yeah. people call you something enough, like, you well, almost like, believe it. Yeah. And so wow. that, <laughs> that uh, affected how I interacted with people in high school. And then another rumor actually went on in a similar fashion. And again, it was false, but I had already kind of had this reputation that I was almost putting on after being told you became I became who they I wanted exactly they, they wanted you to be something and you're yeah. like yeah oh you know what that reminds me of that reminds me of um, easy, a. easy a it literally <laughs> it I was that movie. it was like, like easy a let me just take it yeah yeah so but like a lot more of an awkward easy a like I was not like some confident girl like strutting my stuff yeah. like Emma Stone was in that movie yeah. I was definitely like shy and quiet and um you know, rumors just flew around and it ended up being quite hard because um, I had one really good friend who I thought was going to be like my best friend forever and I she like did we, not I feel like stand by me. Oh <laughs> so, I, I lost a really good friend in high school too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's always like the first big heartbreak. Like you think, like for me, that was my biggest heartbreak yeah. that I've gone through losing your best friend who's like your sister. It's rough. I was, when I went through that, it happened where I went... Like I said, I went um, to school in grade 9 for an entire year. I got injured in the summer going into grade 10. And then when I came back to school, she was all supportive of me for that entire year that I was away. And when I started coming back to school, she was kind of the person where in our friend group, she was super shy. So whenever I made a new friend, I'm like, this is my friend, uh -huh. Clarissa. <laughs> Making up a name, but it's yeah. close enough. <laughs> so if you ever see this, hi, Clarissa. <laughs> How you doing? You oh been good? Gosh. I've been great. <laughs> um, but when I came back, Clarissa, she was kind of one of those girls who like, well, all of our friends were our friends because I was friends with them. Mm -hmm. And I think when I came back, because there was a lot of attention surrounding me and like the school board was super supportive of me and they had like assemblies and like, I mean, I'm coming back and like, only got on a wheelchair mm -hmm. and a lot of people were just like really, really supportive and I think that drove her crazy and yeah. she just one day 
literally just stopped talking to me. I saw her, this girl was like a sister to me, and I go yeah. in the hallway, and I'm like, hey! And then she just looked at me and walked away. That's and insane. that was like that for the next two years. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, I was devastated. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking people around us why, and they're like, she won't give us a reason. She just said that you've done something unforgivable, and I'm like, what? What are you talking about? So and I was saying, I was devastated. Going to prom was so hard because we always talked about like what our prom experiences would be like mm -hmm. together. Like we never were like, oh, we're gonna have dates. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be me and you, girl. Me, me and you. <laughs> yeah. You're my date. We already figured it out in like, grade nine, mm -hmm. and it was so difficult. And uh, definitely my first heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Second, like, really. Yeah. So I remember she was friends with a group of girls who definitely didn't like me and definitely kept rumors going about me and that was so tough to see her every day at school and behind closed doors we were still friendly but yeah. then as soon as the other friends were involved it was kind of like a cold shoulder yeah. and um yeah the girls thought I was mean for kind of standing up for myself being like why do you treat me like this because I was pretty forward about it and yeah that that friendship trailed off and that hurt me so bad and then having all those rumors in middle school and kind of bringing that on to my high school experience and not having a friend to be like, this is why I'm acting this way. Like I am yeah. hurting. Like this yeah. has been really rough. It just became too much for me. And eventually I changed schools, got a fresh start. And here we are. Yeah. I've learned uh, and grown up for sure from the experience. But um, yeah, I, it's made me a lot more, I guess, like I understand when I see a young girl behaving a type of way. Yeah. I'm not very judgmental because I'm like, I've done a lot of those things. I've yeah. been through that and you can't really judge because you have no idea what that person's gone I, through. I always tell people that you don't know someone's story. Mm -hmm. And unless you know someone's story, you can't really judge what they're going through, like their character, what they're going mm -hmm. through. Because you know, so much of what we do is just a reflection of what we've been through exactly. previously. And I know that, like, I have had moments where I wasn't, like, you know, the star tailor that I needed to be. <laughs> and it's because, you know, I was myself hurting with, like, my own self-love. And mm -hmm. it was reflecting and, and manifesting in different ways and learning more about that, actually, in high school and learning the psychology mm -hmm. of, like, why we do the things we do. Okay, let me give myself a little bit of a break. Exactly. And sometimes the people around me, and you can you can definitely see like especially hurt people do mm -hmm. hurt people. Yeah. Um. So I think one of the things that was great about going back to the event was just kind of having an understanding of what I tried to share with people is having more empathy for others, mm -hmm. especially when you don't understand. And if you don't understand, it's kind of okay to ask. Like, yeah. ask, are you okay? Like, mm -hmm. is there anything you want to talk? Um, so I think it was a really special day. It was. It, it was, was. it was a great day, and I said that as well at the end of mine. I was like, even, even like someone who's been through quite a bit of bullying, have I been nice every day of my life? Like, I'm sure there's at least one person in this world who's like, oh, I didn't think she was very nice, mm -hmm. because we all have bad days, and yeah. that doesn't make it okay, but... You know, giving yeah. a little bit more empathy to everyone, I think, makes such a smoother ride. Sure. <laughs> because we go, th like, we all have gone through so much stuff that people might not even know about, so. Yeah. And so through all of that, like, middle school, high school experience, mm -hmm. when did you start your channel? Okay, so. Because I feel like you started your channel maybe somewhere amidst that, right? Or was uh, it right later? Out? So. Later. I started watching YouTube videos in middle school, loved it, got into makeup, and that's where um, it started. And I knew I wanted to create a channel, but I was going through a lot. I, I knew I didn't know myself. Like, I yeah. knew I was so lost. And it would have been so hard. It, it would have been bad. <laughs> like, if I had shown all the little, you know, things that I went through, if I had put that online, maybe when I was really upset or something. Yeah. And you can't take it back. So I'm glad that I waited okay. quite a while till I matured quite a bit um, before I started filming. But... I started once I got to my new school. It was I was going into grade twelve, so I think it was 2012 at the time, mm -hmm. twenty thirteen, mm -hmm. that I started my channel. And the videos were rough. They're not online. Like you can't even see them. Did you take them down? Yeah. Like it looks like some of my first videos are like how I curl my hair with the Conair curling wand, and then there was like get ready with me for prom. But there was like six months of videos prior with an entirely different camera. Uh, I was going to say, no so yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I was just going through like some of like looking at some of your old videos mm -hmm. and I think that was your first, I thought this was, yeah. like, this was so good. Oh no. Like that first <laughs> video, like it her, your, 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 was a prom one and yeah, it's like a mm -hmm. hair one. And I was like, oh man, she's like, was pretty consistent off the bat. Oh, but well no. There was a lot of private ones, but it, my parents got me a nicer camera in grade 
12, somewhere in, like, I think December for Christmas I got it. And then yeah. they started to be a little bit better. I mean, I was super awkward on camera for a long time. Like, even when I go back a year or two years ago, I do cringe at myself and I keep privating videos and people are like, where did that one go? I want to watch it. And I'm like, it never happened. <laughs> it's pretty that. I, think, I think you made that up. Yeah. Right? I know. I This isn't with me with the podcast. Like, when I go to, you know, edit it to put it up, I am oh. watching it and I'm just like, <laughs> like, am I really like that? I'm like... Oh, I'm gonna rewatch it and be like, Jackie, you stutter a lot. Like, get your words out. <laughs> I say, like, way too much. Oh, and me my, too. my mom, I know, whenever, whenever, after I was done interviewing, um, I had Blair on the podcast last time. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. <laughs> Again, this podcast is available on iTunes, and if you're watching it on YouTube, obviously, you have made your way here. <laughs> but, um, after I was done, my mom, she's like, you know you say like all the time. <laughs> I'm like, like, but I'm like, I'm trying, like, not to, I'm trying, to, like, my best. <laughs> just say it. It's hard, it's hard, but, uh, um, I can imagine just starting off. Did you tell people, right, like, when you first started? Yeah, so the school I oh, went to after, good. the kids were super nice. Like, I really didn't have any issues there at all, partially because I changed how I was acting, yeah. but also it was just a really nice group of kids, which was a refreshing change from the school before. So I'm just get a bad mix of people. Like it it's so weird, but sometimes you get a group yeah. of kids who can make it help for everyone else. Yeah. And um that's kind of what happened at the school before. But this new school, people were great and I started and they were so nice. Like in the halls they'd be like, Oh I loved your hair tutorial. I tried it last weekend. Like just super casual about it. People didn't make a big deal. Oh, that's um, so because I've yeah. heard horror stories about the YouTubers I know. hiding and then when they started it's and it's hard. Like I literally just started uploading videos, and I've seen a few like comments underneath where someone said, "This sucked." <laughs> and I'm, it's like my heart. <laughs> oh oh man! Yeah, it just take me like eight hours to edit. But I know fine. It's, it sucked. Cool. Yeah. But I know some other YouTubers think that they had were hard. Like people would rank them in school, so mm -hmm. I'm glad you didn't have to go through. Yeah, yeah, I did have a singing channel before my beauty channel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I did do that and people would at my first high school play it in class, like hold it up in the middle of class and it would be me singing. But I honestly that didn't really bother me. I was like, cool, it's another view. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really mind. Thanks for the support. Yeah, but it wasn't exactly my personality being put out there. It was me singing a song. Yeah. And um I thought I was pretty good. I mean looking back they weren't that good, but I didn't feel like I was being made fun of when people were sharing them. Yeah. Uh, versus, I think if I had started beauty videos when I was back at that first school, yeah, I, I don't know how that. it would have mm -hmm. went down. Maybe people would have been supportive. I don't know. But at the new school, people were really nice about it. So it was, it was fun. And so when was the switch? Because like, it is YouTube is something that's kind of hard to you know break into. Yeah. But when did you see the shift from okay, this is fun to oh. I am having traction in like was there like a video that like helped you go more viral or yeah. something that helped your channel for sure so my first get ready with me for prom that one took off I think it's over a million views now and I don't have very many like viral videos at all my channel is definitely like slow and steady mm -hmm. I feel like um, so my subscribers are have been growing still slow and steady but my views kind of maintain around the same mm -hmm. which I a lot of us are finding with the new subscribe the whole, the whole deal issue, yeah, yeah cuz even if you're subscribed press the bell notification for Taylor guys because Please. Oh yeah you won't get notified yeah so it's kind of cut the initial base views yeah. down a lot but um it's it's still super fun but that prom one i guess it was like a good time of year when i posted it a lot of people well every We're year people go to prom but yeah. that year there was less people online so it did take off quite a bit and then uh, i just kept doing videos from there and I think I found more of my niche more recently like in the past year because I've always loved pop culture and mm -hmm. music videos um, TV shows especially movies Same. so focusing more on characters has been really fun for me I was gonna say that so what I have noticed in doing more of a deep dive into your stuff I actually I actually followed your channel before um, we met so like, I'm not <laughs> like a like a jumping on the bandwagon or uh, afterwards. But what I have noticed is that you have had a lot of really great success with, like you said, your character videos. Mm -hmm. So Jackie, for people who don't know, which I mean, if <laughs> they probably don't, they, hi, they probably. <laughs> but she makes these incredible. Um, some of my favorites have been your. Oh God, 
Is an Audrey Hepburn one? Yeah, there's been an Audrey Hepburn and a couple of those. Was breakfast at Tiffany. Breakfast at Tiffany. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. The Breakfast at Tiffany one. The Hunger Games one. Thank you. She does these like recreations and she doesn't only just do like the hair for it. Like she also goes full out and does <laughs> the makeup. And what I loved about the Hunger Games one was just like got in the woods. And she oh yeah. Literally walked. She had like a whole intro. I'm like, oh my God. I <laughs> am living for this. Like, so funny. So, so good. Thanks. Well, well, the first one you did of those, do you remember? Oh, the first one. Doing- oh yeah. The first one that it was more of a transformation and a character was Alison De Laurentiis from Pretty Little Liars. Yes. But back in the day, I had blonder hair and I kind of looked like Allie back then. Yeah. So I always I got that. told, oh, you look like Allison from Pretty Little Liars. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'll do a little video and get the, you know, the whole outfit and do the makeup. So that one took off quite a bit. And then over the years, I kept getting told I looked like literally everyone. I just have a face like that, I guess. She's a transformative face. <laughs> yeah, it's like plain, but I can carve it out. You know what I yeah. mean? So I could like kind of look like different people. And I started getting that all the time. And then I was like, how can I use that to my advantage <laughs> and kind of do something cool with it? So um, yeah, I started picking celebrities that I knew I looked a little bit like, people that told me I looked like, and then switching up the contour a bit to make it a little bit more like a transformation. Yeah, that is so awesome. And one thing I really liked that you uh, just said in there is that you kept hearing people say something and you're like, maybe I should listen. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly how I started this podcast. Oh, everyone really? always says, you know, you love to speak, you love to interview people, why aren't you doing anything about mm-hmm. it? And I said, what's that? good point Mm -hmm. and I think that's probably a good point for like anyone who is trying to be a creator or something like if there's something that you consistently hear people say you're good at you should maybe believe them and you can maybe do something good with it Mm -hmm. like look you've made a career of this what was that like for your parents or because yeah did so after high school Mm -hmm. you did full um youtube full-time no so I went to university for a year and I felt kind of pressured to study? go. Queens, I went to Queens, and I did general That's arts. Cool. Um, initially, I wanted to go for fine art, and I kind of went towards general art because I didn't get into the fine art program at Queens, and I did everywhere else. But my ex-boyfriend went to Queens, and I kind of, really he told wanted me, to well, he was like, you should really come. And we were kind of reconnecting, and I was like, this is probably a bad decision, but I'm doing it. So <laughs> <laughs> I did go to school what there. <laughs> yeah. And I liked my classes. I really didn't enjoy the university experience. I know for some people it's like amazing for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, For me, I just, I really didn't like living in a dorm. There was so much heavy work on camp. You lived on campus, right? It was weird. I actually was like 10 minutes off campus. Okay. And had to take a bus in. I got like the crap out of the stick for um, dorms. But I, my floor, there was some cool people on it, but I, they did party a lot and were always knocking on my door. The bathrooms were gross. It was like puke. It was just not ideal. <laughs> so I didn't yeah, personally love it. Is not like, yeah. <laughs> university is not always what it's cracked to be. Yeah, I mean, I probably could have picked some different people to hang around and maybe it wouldn't have been like that. But um, I just didn't really enjoy it. I didn't go out. I was underage anyway. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really, I didn't try to make that many friends. I think I got in kind of a low place there just because I wasn't happy creatively yeah. because I couldn't really make my videos as much. I wasn't singing anymore. I felt like everyone could hear me through the walls. So when I came <laughs> back, I decided to go to college the next year for makeup and design. And then the next year I did YouTube full time. So okay. I've been doing it full time, I think two years. And have your parents been about that? Cause I know oh, yeah. it's, they've been really supportive. Really supportive. That's good because I think, I think nowadays people are starting to understand YouTube as Mm -hmm. more than just uploading videos for sure um but I think especially before like people were kind of like what is this like what can you do this as a career like and I think that's really great that your parents have been oh they're yeah they're really supportive it's funny they were telling me this recently they were saying um when they told people I didn't finish university, a lot of people were like, oh, my, my kids have to go to university. Mm-hmm. My parents were like, well, if they're not enjoying it and they're going to do something creative and that they're really passionate about, stand behind them. Like, yeah. why not? Because not everyone will be successful after university career. Some people it's great. Some people need to do something different. So they've always been really supportive. And I remember Bethany Moda was huge at the time I was starting. Mm-hmm. And I said, guys, like, this is from YouTube. Like, you can, if you build an audience, you can do 
anything. So, much. Like, so they were already aware that it could become more. And I remember my first thousand subscribers, they thought I was some superstar. Like my parents were like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. So that's when they bought me a, a new camera. And then, um, yeah, they're super proud and always have been really supportive. They filmed those intros that you were talking about really? in the forest. Oh and that was gosh. my dad. Yeah. It's so funny because I did, um, when we did first met, I met your mom. Yeah. And she was like, I think she, I don't know what she said, but she talked to my mom. Mm. And they know that they got along pretty well. Yeah, they did. Right off the bat, they were both like being chatty patties. Yeah. Um, but later on, when my mom, we were driving home, she was raving about your mom <laughs> and she she was even saying she's like I feel like I understand hmm, a little bit more about what you've been trying to explain to me and she's my mom like obviously like for me I I really wanted to go to my program that I went to mm -hmm. um in school and uh I don't regret going at all I definitely don't know if I would need it knowing that I'm doing this now, mm -hmm. but I did have a lot of experience, and I think it was good for me to just, just personal growth sometimes. Personal growth sure. was really good for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but my mom now is just a lot more understanding. So when I told her a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, I want to fly out to play for a couple days and you know, make some good connections, and I have this amazing opportunity. And instead of her being like, what? She was yeah. like, she's like, this is a great chance. This oh, is good. good. Yeah, so I want to say thank you to your mom. <laughs> Your Thanks, Mama Wires. Yeah, Mama <laughs> Wires. She helped out um, my mom with the end today. My mom now talks about it more. She's like, yeah, YouTube is a really big thing. <laughs> and to all of her, too, did you know that YouTube can do things where, like, my mom's super into podcasts now? Oh, cool. And because at first, like, I thought you were just talking into, into you know, I don't know, putting it on Instagram. I'm like, no, podcasts <laughs> is on iTunes. And, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think... Uh, if you are someone out there who is thinking about being a creator, I think if you give your parents, you know, examples of people who maybe you look up to and they can begin to understand what this world is, because it is super fun. Like, look, my job right now is <laughs> hanging out with Jackie, <laughs> drinking some tea, <laughs> some tea, and talking to you guys, and it's fun and it's something I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. But and I know that you're really passionate about what you're doing too. Yeah. Oh, and um, additionally, I see that you have a vlog channel as well. I do. A very new vlog channel. I guess I've had it for, I think, like four months, but only a couple uploads. But I just really wanted to document some of the amazing experience I've had from YouTube, yeah. uh, for myself, and also for anyone else who wants to watch. But mm -hmm. I've had some really amazing I was going to say, what's the, what's the, like, been one of, I think I've watched almost all of them, but for oh. you, what has been one of the highlights? Because I, being... Jackie, being the YouTuber she is, um, sometimes you get to do brand deals or yeah. um, go on trips, trips, <laughs> trips with brands. Yeah. yeah, the first coolest thing that happened, I think, was winning the PNG Beauty Award. I had won. I had sorry. Yeah. I had worked with CoverGirl Olay and Pantene. I think two years ago now. Just it was kind of my first ever brand deal because prior to having a manager. I never got paid for anything because I didn't feel comfortable. Like I thought I was doing something illegal. I didn't know how to do it myself. And so I just waited till I had representation to deal with that whole money side, side of it. Yeah. And um, so I started working with them. And then the next year, there was a Canada PNG Beauty Award. And I got it for my YouTube channel. So that was really cool because so I hadn't really gotten any awards ever. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this is awesome. I'd like to thank my mom. Yeah, thank my dad for so filming with me. Yeah. yeah, and I have actually on YouTube me going up and accepting it. Oh, really? I, I had to watch that. Like, I like to drink at events because I got to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I had a couple drinks. There was champagne there. And I remember walking up and I just kind of like spoke and it, it was fine. But on the way down, you can actually see me like trip. Like, and I'm wearing heels, so it could have been tragic. And you hear me say, oh, almost died. And then just like pick up and keep on going. So that was really cool. And then from there, I think um, just some of the friends that I've made through my management mm -hmm. that are oh, from Vancouver. Awesome. Um, they've come out to Toronto a couple times and like anyone I meet who does kind of mm -hmm. similar stuff We have so much in common. Mm -hmm. and we end up getting along really well So the friendships and then brand deals would for trips like Benefit Canada did a trip to San Francisco And that's one of my favorite that, places. Yeah, I actually visited San Fran for yeah. the first time last. I didn't so realize how cold it was. It was cold for you? It was I went during a free I went okay. in like September and oh. it was 
pretty thick. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. It would be I had big weather. I, had, I drove from um, LA to San Fran. In LA, when I started out, it was like, you know, 20 yeah. degrees. I'm like, woo. <laughs> By the time I got to San Francisco, it was like 14. And oh. it was like there was wind tunnels because the thing, but it, I remember saying, I'm like, despite all of it, I'm like, this is one of the most beautiful, so little, unique. Yeah, little mm -hmm. artsy cities I've ever been to. Like, yeah. The culture is super cool. Everyone is just, it's just like a own little world. world. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and like the streets are, are crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. I do not want to drive there. <laughs> and so you went with Benefit. Benefit. To that, mm -hmm. With a bunch of um, other, I guess, craters. Yeah. yeah. Other Canadian craters. And that was, that was really cool. And more recently you went to Miami, right? I did with a shopping app called Dote. It actually doesn't ship to Canada yet. <laughs> okay. But um, I did work with them and that was really fun because we went to Miami with another group of girls. Um, most of those girls were from like the South, so yeah. it was cool to meet people oh, who were okay. a little different than uh, I'd grown up, so mm -hmm. it was really fun. I was yeah. gonna say, one of my biggest, like even, I'm, again, I'm just kind of starting out in this, but one of the nicest things has been to make and get to meet people who are also creatives who mm -hmm. are kind of understanding, because if you have, I guess, I'm sure you have tons of friends mm -hmm. outside of, a handful. a handful. I don't have tons of friends. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I do. I have like I think a couple as, as, you, as you get older, honestly, you don't. Yeah. You just quality over quantity. For sure. Friend to groups work. get complicated. Like, I just like, I have a one small group of friends from high school still. Yeah. And then I just have like different one-off friendships from different places I've mm -hmm. lived and I love it. Yeah, it's, nice. it's good. Mm -hmm. Honestly, quality, 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 Agreed. quality. <laughs> but when you do, like for me, like it's been nice even when we were at the event just kind of like talking to you a little bit. You just showed me your camera now I understand. <laughs> yeah. And just like we were just chatting earlier and I think that um, it's been really cool to get to know you and different yeah, people along too. the way. So um, yeah, but going forward into the future because mm -hmm. you know YouTube is YouTube and I feel like it's gonna be here forever. But do you see yourself continuing on? Like, if you were to predict in the next couple of years Ooh. what you'd be doing, is it like videos and something else? I'm not me? sure. I'm kind of roll with whatever comes. Well, to be honest, like I don't really plan anything long term, which is kind of a bad thing. But also, it's been I a good thing. No, I think that's actually a good thing because the climate of something can change mm -hmm. so, so quickly, so fast. And I found. Um, a lot of the things that I've ended up loving doing have been by chance and mm -hmm. I didn't think oh no This doesn't fit my path. I was just like, okay, cool. We're gonna roll with this. So yeah. um, For example, that was the first time I did public speaking at the pink shirt day event I've never really stood and just spoke at, like by myself. So that was the first time there you killed um, it. Thank you. Yeah, I like blacked out though. I don't remember really. <laughs> <laughs> experience like I was so nervous and I was just speaking and then I watched it back I looked like contained. No, you, I, watched, <laughs> I know I think I went after you? No, before. Before. I went yeah. before you. And I watched the whole thing. I was like, because I remember telling me you were nervous. I thought you did so oh. You did so good. No, oh, thanks. But I really did black it out of my memory. Like, I don't remember the first half. I had to rewatch it and be like, okay, good. I actually said what I wanted to. But, um, where was I going with this? Oh, where do I see where myself? Where do I feel like yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so public speaking was something I never thought I would do and mm -hmm. ended up really liking. That's awesome. And then recently I did an audition, um, just like an on-camera audition. It was an open call and I sent that in. I was pretty bad at it, but that might be something to explore. Yeah, I um, can totally see you doing TV things. Some, yeah, or, or a host or... Mm -hmm. Something like that. So I'm I'm trying to keep that open because YouTube it could change, you know, and then it might not be a stable career path anymore. But so as I of now, a, I know it changed with um, the ad sense and yeah, things like that. It's it's weird. They don't give us a heads up or nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> by the way, it's crazy. But um, no, it's it's been really fun. And my favorite thing is doing it all, like being on camera, editing it, like planning it. All of that's really fun. I think. It would be fun to be on camera and not have to worry about that. But on the flip side, when I get a bit older, to to like produce something like sometimes I'll do um, a campaign and there'll be men directing me on, on how to do this beauty campaign. I think oh I could do that better. Yeah, because <laughs> I know that like yeah. how to set it up. I know um, you know all the little things that go into it. Yeah, that go into it. So I think also directing if I took a courses for that and that could be an avenue I go down. The evolution of Jack. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and for your followers watching, is there anything that you might not have mentioned? I know that you say like you don't, you haven't like, opened up as much on your yeah. channel, um, but is there anything that you think they would want to know that you maybe haven't 
shared yet that I haven't shared. Hmm. I'm probably lower maintenance than people think because I feel like I look very put together online. Because every, every, every everyone, everyone, everyone does. Does. yeah, unless well, they like, oh, no, like Kitchen no, Famous will make a no. point to say I'm not like kind of so cool. Wait, hold on. <laughs> we pause for a second. Yeah. The fact that you just admit to, well, I mean, not pause for so quick. Yeah. But the fact that you just said Trisha Paytas just made me like it even more. Oh. I love her so much. She's, she's like, hilarious. She's just like the, her videos of her sitting on the floor. I know. And I'm like, that is like me on the inside when you just exactly. like, exactly. You're having a bad day and you just want to sit on the floor and talk it out and she will go from that to full glam yeah like literally looking i'm like wow so fun <laughs> when i get up at like six in the morning to do full glam to like mm -hmm. go to starbucks i'm like live yeah she just does her thing yeah. yeah oh my god that's so funny <laughs> yeah but um yeah my my pictures are usually recreation photos mm -hmm. or when i'm glammed up for an event but for the most part like I'm hair in a bun, my legs are never shaved, don't wear a bra, like it's just more relaxed. We were talking so. about that earlier. Yeah, like, I roll like, up, I'm like, I'm not wearing a bra. bra. <laughs> yeah. I told her, I was like, I put on a bra today oh, for you. Yeah. But um, yeah, but I think that's actually true. I think when people see a snapshot mm -hmm. of your life on Instagram, I have been victim to this before. You see someone, oh, you're scrolling through and you're like, oh god, they look the yeah. best life. But it's like, they're probably, I love how you mentioned though, one of your videos that you have this shirt that you edit in all the time and you like love being home oh like, yeah the cozy shirt yeah the cozy yeah. Shirt. and I was like that is so like I you can't see in the video but see those that rack there yeah there's four sweaters and I literally wear those four sweaters all week and if I'm going out you'll see me something different but that is exactly me. it yeah, yeah. So, oh I go through I do this thing my mom makes fun of me because I get I buy a sweater it'll be like a Brandy Melville sweater I'll wear yeah. it for like a month straight it doesn't really get washed it's yeah. just my lived-in sweater yeah. and then I um it's, awesome. it's, no big deal. it's all good, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. um and then I'll lose it somewhere in my messy room and it's like never to be seen again yeah. so then I buy a new sweater for the yeah. month <laughs> I will wear I have worn the crap out of my, I have an Ivy Park sweater that I just cannot put down, and yep. and I misplaced it the other day, and I started wearing it. That's when my mom's like, "Oh, thank God, yeah. you finally <laughs> took off your uniform." Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. But um, it's good. It is. I think it's good for them to know that you know you are, you are human. And well, like, most of the time I'm just editing. Like, yeah, literally sweatpants editing with tea. Always got some tea or coffee. Yeah. So. Oh, speaking of mm -hmm. today, I actually no, I, I can't really share my tea because this is going to be. What the name of this tea will be a part of my tea launch, which I keep mentioning Exciting. later this year. Cup of tea coming to you in September. <laughs> but what were you drinking? Do you it remember? Coconut. She had a yeah. She's like drinking with like coconut. So like, like coconut, a bit of like vanilla or something. I think it's it really good. So good. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, but mm. that one actually was confirmed to be a part of my line as well. So yeah. I'm super excited for you guys to eventually have my teas and. No, maybe sit down with your tea and yes. watch um, these episodes. But I think I just wanted to thank you oh. so, 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 so much. Jackie has been so kind and oh. I've been really nice getting to know you. And I really appreciate you coming up to my house to oh, be on my no podcast. Problem. Yeah, no, this was so fun. Yeah, and so for people who don't know, how can they find you so on you can, Oh, you can find no. me. <laughs> Sorry, I always cut you up. Um, you can find me under Jackie Wires on Instagram and YouTube, even Facebook. So yeah, yeah. always under my name. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me here on YouTube. You can just type in my name, Taylor Lindsay Noel. I'm on Instagram at Taylor L N. My other poetry Instagram account is at. I know. I don't know about that. Oh, Ooh, I'll have to do some creeping. Yeah. <laughs> I post I post poetry quotes. Oh nice. But yeah, um you can follow that at Taylor L N underscore writes as in W R I T E S. You I would love it if you guys could hit that, you know, subscribe button, thumbs the thumbs up. I what's you're the YouTuber, so what do okay. we have to, what do we have to touch subscribe, on? Subscribe, hit the bell notification. Ooh. There's actually a new part now that you have to press. Wow, I don't even know what it is. You have to say always allow because sometimes it'll just give you like temporary ones. I don't oh. know. It's weird. I'm probably explaining that wrong. Too. But there's like you, several like steps now. Yeah. Um, and then just give it a like. Make sure to comment. Yeah. And um, you can find all the links we're talking about because I'm probably forgetting something in the description below. Um, and uh, Tea Time with Tay is on iTunes and anywhere else you can find podcasts. So thank you so much for listening. And until next time. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>